Hey everybody, welcome to the video. Welcome to the channel. My name is Mike and this is the abandoned build project that my wife and I bought. Now if you saw part one of this project, it was just a couple videos ago, we brought our custom Wapa Chapa, it's our custom modified bush hog out here, and just kind of cleaned up around this area to see where we could find some kind of starting point because it was a mess and still is. But today we've got some T-posts, we've got some of this, which we'll explain what that's all about, at least how it works in Indiana anyway. And we've got one of my favorite tools, a water level. It's fancier than you think, I, I promise you that. And this is like the limited version. It's got some pretty all but fancy options on it. We'll go through all of that. What we're trying to do today, we're gonna to go out and mark all the property corners and find any property marks that are there. This thing was surveyed five years ago, so I know it's got a recent survey. And I'll show you what app I use to kind of help find that property line. We'll get those marked with some T-posts. We'll get some purple paint up on some trees and T-posts, like I said, explain how that law works in Indiana. We're also gonna go and try to find a path through the woods of how we can make a trail back to the Hoosier National Forest. This doesn't border the Hoosier National Forest. So we're gonna to try to mark a trail. We'll get the Wapa Chapa out and try to cut that trail. And then we're gonna use the water level and try to find each side. There's a little bit of a ravine back there and we're gonna to have to make a timber footbridge to get across that ravine for our trail. We're gonna use that water level to find where each side of that footbridge needs to be. Let's drive to the property lines that we can actually use the ranger on and then we'll just have to do some hiking too. About five years ago, I know they came out and did a survey out here. So I know there's a pretty fresh survey. It's just a matter of finding the markers and putting some permanent T-posts in the place. So we're just going to keep driving that direction until we get close to a property line. And then we can walk that property line one way or another and hopefully find some markers. Now this isn't, you're not going to drive stakes with this as far as the legal aspect goes, like a legal survey, but it gets you in the area of where your property lines are. And then typically you can kind of find some actual legal marks as far as that goes. So you can see there where that blue line is, or blue dot is. Now I know I'm pretty much on the property line. So we can walk one way or the other, and hopefully find a marker. So we've walked everything down that line on that side, from this side of the crossing back up to the road, and I can't find a single marker. So that's a little frustrating, but I know for a fact on this side of the crossing, on the forest side, there are markers. I've seen that. So we're gonna walk that line next, see if we can find anything over there. We can put some T-posts up. for is this mark right here there's the one two three pieces of property that come together and i really want to find that corner if we can't what oh hey there little buddy a little inchworm anyway see if we can find that spot look at there can you guys see it look at that so we got that in there and i held it on my side of the line just a little bit. Again, it's not for legal reasons, it's just so we kind of know where everything's at. And we're not marking it because we're worried about neighbors moving anything. The property owners up here, all the property owners are awesome. Everybody gets along, everybody communicates. I was actually just talking to this gentleman over here this morning about this property and his property and some other lots in the area. It's more so, these are just little flimsy fiberglass poles. And you know, it's the woods, trees fall, just like that fellow right there. So we're just trying to put something more sturdy it will uh, survive the elements more than a fiberglass pole and wood lads. My guess is that line over there we couldn't find anything on. Probably had wood lads. They probably rotted away or got knocked over or something and we can't find them. Something a little bit more permanent. Look at that. The post is wet, so it's not going to be great. But... So I'm back to the crossing. There should be a line right in here somewhere, but I'm not seeing any markers. I was hoping there would be a marker on one side of the crossing. But there is not. I don't know how to make that show up on camera, how far down that is. I mean, it's it's pretty good. More in some places, oh, that's more than 10 foot for sure. This is what we got. 
cool though. It's got a lot of rock in it. That'll come in handy. got the wapa chopper out you guys have seen this before but if you haven't it's just a bush hog with the back cut out of it a little bit of reinforcement up here to push the trees away and takes out i don't know two inch two and a half inch trees works really well 15 horsepower output on that pto by the way in case you're wondering we also have their iob cordless saw out this is exactly what those little saws are made for just kind of blazing a trail through the woods and that's what we're going to do we found the one property marker on this side of the crossing so we're going to start calling it by the way the crossing we're gonna go ahead and blaze a uh, loop trail on this side of it. We get that done. We'll head to the other side because we gotta kind of pack everything by hand over there and get those property corners marked. This nut right here is missing and uh, I looked all over the barn I don't have a nut that size but I do have a uh, wire cup wheel that uh, you know does fit so we're sticking with the old uh, run what you brung motto today okay On the bright side, I know what size nut that is now. issue here kind of stuck in a I don't know what you'd call this I guess it's a ditch I guess technically we're stuck in a ditch well honestly though I just think it's that little tree that's holding us back let me uh oh yeah all right okay things are looking up now well, at least I didn't do it in the briars Let's give it the old rock and sock them and see what happens here. Sure that'll work fine. 
That'll work great. Quite sure I want to call it progress. We're definitely more forward, but we're also more, you know what I'm, you know what I'm trying to say there. But uh... Uh, we're definitely getting somewhere now. I'm not sure I want to go all the way that way, but maybe if we can, you know what I mean? And then at the same time, yeah, that ought to do it. I made that Wapa Chapa to be able to cut trails through the woods quickly and easily. That thing works great. It took about an hour and 15 minutes to get that loop done. It's about a half mile loop, I'd say. I can measure it out later. And then run that pulverizer around and kind of pull everything off the trail. That includes the half hour getting stuck in the ditch. So that's not too bad. I'm gonna grab some T-posts, a hammer, some paint. And we're gonna go hiking that way. See if we can find the forestry side of it. Here's the Hoosier National Forest boundary. They're really good about having survey markers along the property edge, so they're pretty easy to find. So that's all Hoosier National Forest on this side. And this is that one in the previous video, the one that's actually got the survey pin. You can see it down there. With the cap on it. So I'm just gonna come uphill. I don't wanna 
disturb the area where that pin's at. Just enough that we know this is our corner. We'll get this one in the ground and paint it. I'm sure editing Mike has already put up a graphic that somewhat explains the purple paint law. It's pretty self-explanatory. I think they passed in 2018 or, or 19 maybe. It's in several other states, and if it's in your state, leave in the comments below. I'm just kind of curious. Basically, it's just no trespassing is, is all it is. It's just, I guess the theory is it's easier to spray paint stuff than just hang up no trespassing signs. I'm really not 100% sure. If you go to the tractor store, which I got this at Orsland's, um, I mean, they literally have a no hunting purple spray paint, so you know exactly what you're supposed to get. There are a few things I don't quite understand. I don't know why on T-posts or posts it's every 36 feet. Not 100% sure what the reasoning behind that measurement is, and I don't know the reasoning behind the height of what it has to be. Maybe that's line of sight, I'm not sure. But it is easy, I mean, it's not bad. You just kind of go around and paint stuff. I'm not gonna paint every 100 feet for trees or 36 feet for posts or whatever it is. We're just gonna put them on the posts we have up and call it good enough. Now, what I have not found in our time hiking out here, I don't know where the opposite corner to this is, so that we are gonna have to find. Like I said, the Forest Service is pretty good about marking. There's another survey marker there. I doubt that is the corner though. Let me check my app. We'll put a post on it either way though. You gotta see the orange fiberglass post right through there. This one right here. Okay, we'll put a post there. So we're about halfway down. We marked that corner there. We're about halfway down. The other corner should be up there somewhere. We'll go ahead and put one here and we'll keep going through that. It gets pretty thick up in there though. That one's good to go. Let's see if we can find the next corner. What's that? There's something orange in there. No. Yep, there it is. There's another one right there. Perfect, we'll have the corner to find. I like that. Right there, look at that. Oh, it's right, right in front of you. We'll walk straight towards it. So now we got both corners. Oh gosh. And a bonus. Both corners and a bonus. That'll work. Look at this big flat spot though. Not bad. There's that one. That one we just did in the corner is right in there. We'll go ahead and keep hiking this line, see if there's any more. If it's worth bringing some other posts out another day. I'm not gonna do any today, but let me see if there's any more along this line. It's a pretty spot right here though. Then we'll get that water level out, explain how it works, see if we can figure out a good place to come across with our timber bridge. Okay. Not bad. Not bad at all. We kind of knew what we had when we got the property, but we weren't 100% sure. And the more I walk around it, the more we mark off and make trails the happier I am with it. So let's talk water level real quick. What it is, and uh, why I like it so much. This is what it is right here, actually. Can you see that? It's a bucket. I've got a lid on it. There's 
clear plastic hose, tubing attached to it, comes out the bottom, right like that. Like I said, this is the fancy version. It's actually got a valve on the end. So a water level does exactly what the name implies. It levels things. It's accomplishing the exact same thing a laser level is going to accomplish. But there's a few places where this actually works better. I have mine set up in a five gallon bucket. The guy I actually learned this from, he had his set up in just a regular, regular plastic toolbox. And really the only thing that matters is that it's, well, it can hold water. That's really the only thing that matters. And we're going to set the bucket. Let's just say right about here. You can see the water flowing through it. Right now it's just working out the air bubbles. We'll get below the uh, below the water level in the bucket. And we're just going to let it flow until all the air gets out of it. I used to work for a kitchen and bath remodel company. That's actually where I met uh, Mike. He also worked for the same kitchen and bath remodel company. And the gentleman there that owned it, his name is Bernie Bauer, he kind of taught me how to use a water level. It's the first place I've ever seen one. Like I said, he just used a toolbox on his. The container doesn't really matter. The big thing is that the container is waterproof. The water doesn't leak out. You got a place for the tubing to come out the bottom side. That's pretty much it. That's really all there is to the water level. It's got some advantages over laser level. And the reason he used it a lot is whenever you do remodels, if you've ever done remodels, there's one thing you know about life. There's no such thing as a house that is plumb level or square. They don't exist. They have never built a house that is perfectly plumb level or square. They never will. The nice thing about using a water level is you can go through a house and you can check level in different rooms. You can't do that with a laser in that application because the laser doesn't go through the walls. Once that line of sight is blocked with the laser level, you can't read it anymore. So at the water level, as long as the tube could reach, you could check what that level was in each room. Same application when we did foundation stabilization where we'd work on old foundations and kind of repair them. You'd take it through the crawl space, same theory. You know that whatever line you need to get a shot at that laser, there's gonna be a piece of duct work or a random water line or something hanging down. With the water level, you can crawl through that crawl space and you can check everywhere you need to check and it just, it works great. It's also a lot less expensive than a laser level. Don't get me wrong, you can't beat a laser level. They are handy, and when you got a big job site, you'll want to have it. But for something small like this, the $40 setup here is gonna work great. The whole reason I added the valve, and what I learned when crawling through crawl spaces, is anytime you get this below the level of the bucket, water's gonna come out. When you're crawling through the crawl space, that gets annoying pretty quick, plus you kind of run out of water in your bucket. And since I got to walk across this little ditch, I put a valve on there so I don't lose a bunch of water. Obviously, you have to have it open, though, whenever you're checking level. You can't leave it closed and check level. It just doesn't work that way. We're going to open our valve. And we're going to lift it up a little bit. And what you're going to see, you see that water level settling. And it's going to settle out at the same level that it is in that bucket. See that? Now you can add food coloring to this. I've also seen guys add blue chalk and red chalk to it as well, so it stands out a little bit better. That's definitely an option. So you just give it a couple seconds, and it's gonna level out to the exact same as that. There are definitely, there are definitely fancier ways to do things. You can always, you can always fancy it up however you want. I'm just, oh, I got water in my valve here, but or mud in my valve, anyway. I'm just using electrical tape and taping it to a T-post. The big thing that matters is that wherever you're getting your measurement from, it's consistent. Now you can see there's water in the line right now, but as soon as we open our valve, it'll fall out. And it'll level out where it needs to be. Now while that's leveling out, this is the level I want to come in from on this side. <laughs> Pretty close to it anyway. So I'm just going to go ahead and put a flag right there so I can remember where it's at. And now that it's leveled out there, I'll just wrap a piece of tape 
at that level and we'll go find where that is at on the other side. I know you guys can't see the water from there. We'll let it settle out, but it looks like we're going to be right about here. So we're going to have to go uphill quite a way. Yeah, it's settling out right here. Let's. My guess was down in here. Now I got the valve closed. So this piece of tape right here is the level it's supposed to be. That's where that is on that side. But the valve's closed. So as I open the valve up top, you'll see the water level come up. And where that water settles out, like we said, that's where that orange flag is on that side. But we want that water level to be on that piece of tape. So we need to go uphill. And this is where we're at. And go uphill. Let it settle out again. There we go. Pretty close. There you go. It settles out right at that tape. So that flag and that first flag are the exact same level. It's a pretty slick system. It's, I mean, it's very user friendly. You can't really mess it up. I highly suggest the valve feature. It just makes things easier. There's just not a lot that can go wrong with it. I mean, it's, it's relatively easy to problem solve. It ain't got no water in it. As long as your tubing's long enough, as long as you can reach where you need to reach, you can level it. It's pretty great. It's a pretty handy tool to have around. Obviously, I could go borrow Mike's laser level, but I don't like borrowing stuff from Mike all the time. And when it comes to this, now I got this sweet little setup made. I can use this for all kinds of things. It's just a handy tool to have around. The handy thing about the bucket is when you're all done, just coil the tubing back in here, and you're ready to store it. Where did my lid go? There it is. You just have to have a small notch. You just have to have a small notch for the uh, tubing to go through. I like that. On the shelf it goes. So Chelsea just got home. She's been out yard selling with her friend today. She's got some pretty cool stuff. Uh, I'm pretty excited. She always gets the best stuff when she goes yard sailing. Check this out. Huh? Look at that. Yard sale find. You can't beat that. Check this out. Chickens. Just kidding. We already had those. Huh? Yard sale fire pit. Not bad. Anyway, we're going to show her the new trailer real quick. Don't tell her I got stuck earlier. It's fine. Just there. You're going to want to sit in the middle, though, and keep all your hands, legs, and complaints inside the cab. Let's go. You're giving off sketch vibes. It's fine. Oh, we really got to make the turn here. Be right back. Be right back. You're fine. Is it low or high right now? Low. Okay. What's it in now? High. Okay. I broke the shifter cable today, by the way. Are you kidding me? Why are you always breaking things? Hold on. Here we go. This is why we can't have nice things. This. this is why we can't have nice things. I'm pretty sure we're like 10 feet that way to try the property line. It's pretty close. This feels 
flags right there? Yeah. That's the level spot. That's where we'll build our little timber bridge at. So we found three out of the four property corners. That's pretty good. I'm confident that one's over there somewhere. And if we look in the winter time when everything's off the trees, it'll be a little bit easier to find it. The main thing is we have a pretty general idea of where the lines are at. We are able to get that trail all the way around this half of it. We got everything marked for where we want to put our timber bridge across the crossing, whatever you want to call it there. And I'm pretty excited about all that. That's a lot of progress. And it's definitely a good step forward on this piece of property. The next step, what we plan on doing next, and it will be very soon, is ripping out all this old subfloor. We have a few dead trees around the edges, you can see that. And some piles of stuff that we cleared last time we worked on it. So that'll be the next step, getting that off there, getting those dead trees down, getting that all burnt up, and that kind of thing. The good news is we're going to use the Hyundai HX85A to do that, and it is actually available later this week. So that may be the next video, and I, I hope it is. While it's up here, we're also gonna use it to pick through these beams, cause this is just, that's gonna be Snake City. That is Nope Rope Nation right in there. And uh, we're gonna kind of pick them off there with the excavator very carefully and avoid any, you know, springy surprises in there. And I'm pretty excited, honestly. I am very excited to go through these old logs. And as soon as we get everything cleaned up and burnt up here and we go through those logs, the next step will be building the timber bridge across our little crossing there so we can get to the other half of our property. And we're pretty excited about that. That's going to be awesome. I cannot wait to start on that project. But first things first, right? I hope you guys are enjoying the abandoned build site series. I hope you're enjoying the YouTube Yacht series. And I just want to say thank you for everybody that jumped over to my wife Chelsea's new channel, brand new channel called Wild Roots. Everybody that jumped over and subscribed and watched and commented, we really, really appreciate it. And we're very excited for that new chapter in the little YouTube thing we've got going on. As always, thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.